Hi, I'm Marion McPartland. We're here today for a live recording of piano jazz at Historic Mechanics Hall in downtown Worcester, Massachusetts. My guest today on Piano Jazz is Linda Ronstadt, one of the world's most loved singers and one of the most versatile and spectacular performers ever heard. Her career has covered rock, pop, country, Latin, and her new CD just abounds with beautiful jazz songs. There's no stopping this girl. Just listen and be amazed. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Miss Linda Ronstadt. You know, it's so amazing that this is the first time I've met you in all the years I've watched you on TV and listened to you. An amazing person. You, you, you look like a kid. It's amazing. <laughs> Doesn't she? Well, thank you. <laughs> and, of course, we're here to sing and play with the help of... Oh, you brought a wonderful guy with you. Alan Broadbent to play piano. So. I brought Alan with me. Fine piano player. So I guess without further ado, it would be great to hear you sing. All righty. This song is the opening track on my new Verve album, which is called Hummin' to Myself. Um, and it's called Just Tell My Said Hello. into his eyes when you speak my name maybe there's a spark to start another flame do I love him don't say yes or no if he 
should ask you, but he won't, I know, cause it's all over and forgotten. It's a beautiful song. Learned it from Pete Hamill, my buddy, journalist buddy in New York. Turned me on to that song. It's a great I'm song. very grateful to him for that. You pick great song. I just want to know more things about you that I didn't know. Like when you were quitting school, you started a group called the Stone Ponies. Right, yeah. I love that. <laughs> We um, were like a, a, we thought of ourselves as a kind of a acoustic folk rock band, which just meant that, you know, two guys with guitars and me, and we were, we would play, you know, clubs, we would come to New York and play clubs, and the air conditioning was usually louder than we were, you know, we'd be with some electric, we used to play with the mothers, you know, because we had the same manager, we'd open, for, it was like Bambi and Deep Throat on the same bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get started? How did you decide... You wanted to do rock. I mean, did you know you were going to start a group? There must have been a well, boyfriend there somewhere. See, everyone in my family sang. And when we were kids, we, everybody sang. If you, you were going to car went anywhere, if you're washing the dishes, if you're outside ranking in the yard. We sang with each other over the telephone. Everyone sang harmonies. It wasn't until a long time, I was almost you know, probably 15, before it occurred to me that everybody didn't sing. And in this culture, we have a nasty habit of delegating art to professionals, you know, which is really, truly a shame. Everyone should do their own singing, dancing, and playing. And then we have champions like you who do it really well. But people should be doing it in their home. But at any rate, we did. And so I will always try anything that I heard before the age of 10. I feel I can, you know, I feel it's fair game for me, whatever kind of music. There's lots of stuff there. If, it's, if I heard it after 10, I, I don't know how to do it. I just don't, I won't try it. But oh, there was lots different. of stuff going on, fortunately. But, uh, you know, I always felt like to be a singer. My aunt, my aunt was a singer, and she toured the world, and she would come and tell us all these wonderful stories. And so I, I just figured I would sing. I, I, I thought of myself in a hall like this, really. It took me, you know, until I was age 58 to get here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pleasure and a privilege to play in a place that is truly dedicated to music, you know, so... So what came next? I'm glad I finally have, arrived. Uh, what? <laughs> what came next? Did you go um, into another kind of groove? Or? Well, um, I, went to, I went to Los Angeles. I was 17, and I really liked my parents. You know, both of them, my father, everybody in my family was a good singer, so I, I didn't have that 60s, I hate my family thing. Well, and they but, liked what you did. They didn't hate... Well, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> but <laughs> my, my older brother, didn't. he always had a problem with me. But... Um, you know, everything where I was in Tucson, art that was arts or any intellectual ideas, great movies, anything, things like that struggled in Tucson. And it was, I was impatient with it. And there were great musicians in L.A. The first night that I arrived in L.A., we went down to this little folk place called the Ashgrove, and I ran into Ry Cooter, you know, who is, oh God. is still my favorite guitar player in the world. I mean, I heard him play, and that was it. I went, I'm not going back home. They got people like him. No one ever heard of Ry Cooter then, but I didn't care, you know. He was the best, you know. So I wanted to get to play with the best musicians I could. That was what was really on my mind. So did you hang out with him, or you, did you work with him? No, he was very intimidating. <laughs> I love him. He's a great, guy, brilliant guy, and he's yeah. got a heart of gold. You know, he's just not a person that you walk up to and say, hey, you know. So, uh, I didn't. 
But you did something. You got another group together. Or you... Well, I put this. We put. Uh, I, I left home with a friend from Tucson, who, uh, um, you know, was just a pal, and we we ran into another guy, the guy that was playing guitar with Rye that I saw there, and we, you know, he got him in the band, Kenny Edwards, and Bobby Kimmel. They were the guys, and we we just played. In those days, there was a network of folk music clubs. You could learn. We were terrible. I mean, I was just hopeless. You know. Can't and believe we, that. Well. I was loud mainly, you know, I think I was loud. And we would, but we could play all over the country. We could play New York, Philadelphia, Boston, Washington, D.C. Oh, did you get an agent or what? You no, just we, just, we just kind of, uh, we'd sort of show up at these hoots, you know, there would be hoot night. <laughs> we'd show what, up, you know, and say, well, we're going to sing, you know. That's one way to get a gig. Well, then they'd hire, you know, if you played at the, at the open mic, they call it open mic now, I think. Uh, if you were okay at that, then they'd, they'd offer you a gig. And you were so glad to get, you know, 50 bucks a week or $30 a week or something like that. I was very happy to get that. I used to play in Hermosa Beach across from the Lighthouse. You probably played at the Lighthouse, but I was over I there did. at the Insomniac, which oh. is a beatnik <laughs> dive, which is now mercifully a parking lot. Oh, thank God. <laughs> what a place that was. Man, there were the cockroaches you could ride in that joint. <laughs> We've got to have another song, Linda. We just got to. I think we're going to do I Fall in Love Too Easily. I learned right. this from Chet Baker. Ready? I fall in love too easily.
I love that song. And how, how do you choose songs when you're doing I the record? I think they choose me. You know, every song I've ever recorded, I have felt at one time or another that if I didn't get to sing it, I would just die. I mean, I just couldn't survive. And it just is that way. I, a song will first grab me by the collar, and then I have to feel like I want to grab you by the collar and say, i got to tell you this thing that happened to me. It was this way, you know? And it, uh, there are certain songs, uh, since I don't write very much, that simply tell that story in one way or another. And it, often it's not quite what the song is about, literally. It might be something about um, my trip to the market or a book I'm reading or something, you know, very mundane. But it's important to me at the time. <laughs> it's, not always a, it's not always a lost love thing or, or one of those things. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I love, it is. I love the masochistic sounding song. With, I love, you know. I love those. A depressing song always just cheers me right up. It, <laughs> If you're happy, you don't have to sing, you know? You just can be happy. But if you're sad, you need to do something in a hurry. Yeah, then it, well, then that then it better be to good. sing or play, whichever. Yeah. Well, there's more coming up with Linda Ronstadt and her pianist, Alan Broadbent. <laughs> you're going to do a tune I absolutely love. Um, I guess I'll hang my tears out to dry. And this song is really, I have to say this song is really special to me because years ago I made three albums with Nelson Riddle. And um, I, I know well, you did. <laughs> and they I, were fabulous too. I had, I had gone to my powers that be at that time, which were my record company, my manager, who, great people, all, you know, had always been great for me and not complaining in any way, you know, I mean, it's only in a respectful way, but, and told them that I really wanted to make a record of American Standard songs, and they went, oh, well, good, why don't you throw your career away with both hands, you know? So I said, oh, well, I'm good at that. And um, I really would like to do this, and they thought, well, we'll just ignore her, and it'll go away. So I, I at some point, I think I made sort of like a fledgling attempt at this record and it didn't work and they went, ha ha, we told you so. So then I was really disappointed and I was sad, I was sad. I went off to uh, London and spent a winter there doing Pirates of Penzance. And the whole wow. time... <laughs> one day I was driving out to the studio. It was, we'd have to be there you know, before dawn. And I was driving out there, and spring had come, and so the sun actually came up while I was still outside of a building. And it was like a hormone rainbow, you know, just out that far in the, in the north. I I'd, I'd come from the desert. There were a lot of sun, but there wasn't so much of it there in England. And I was listening to my headphones, and Frank Sinatra was singing this song, Guess I'll Hang My Tears Out to Dry, and I was just flooded with this feeling that I could not let go of this idea of singing this record, doing this record of standards. And I was lucky enough to get Nelson Riddle to do it. I didn't know whether he was still alive, whether he'd ever heard of me. He pretty much hadn't. But, you know, he was happy to have the gig. So he, he was happy to have the job. So, we, you know, it worked out for us both. Boy, you're a determined woman and a I, good job, Once too. I get my teeth in a song, you know, it latches onto me or I latch onto it. Well, anyway, this is it. The torch I carry is handsome It's worth its heartache in ransom And when the twilight steals I know how the lady in the harbor feels the sky since love is gone can't pull myself together guess I'll hang my tears out to dry friends ask me out I 
tell them I'm busy I must get a new alibi I stay at home and ask myself where is he guess I'll hang my tears out to dry string of dreams dry little teardrops my little teardrops remind him of our crazy schemes somebody said just Forget about him So I gave that treatment a try Strangely enough I got along without him Then one day he passed me right by Tears out to dry. Oh, that is so beautiful, and I love the modulations that you and Alan so craftily. Well, now this is a Nelson Riddle arrangement being rendered on the piano by Alan, which is a really nice thing. Nelson liked to modulate down. You know, I'd often ask him for a modulation, and he'd take it down a half a step or, or well, if, more. Well, I mean, if it sounded all right, what's wrong with that? It gives a beautiful lift in a way that, you know, going up doesn't always do. It's a funny little arranging trick. I'll have to try and do that learned myself. learned a lot of stuff from him. He's so terrific. <laughs> well, now this will be really fun for me to get to play one for you. Oh, great, right. And uh, this is a nice... George Gershwin tune, someone to watch over me. There's a somebody I'm longing to see. Heart. 
he carries the key. Won't you tell him, please, to put on some speed? Follow my lead, oh, honey. Someone who watch over me. This is you and Alan. Oh, I love this. Get out of town. Yeah, yeah. Cole Porter song. Trees. 
just disappear I care for you much too much And when you're near, close to me dear We touch too much The thrill when we meet is so bittersweet That darling, it's getting me down I care for you much, too much And when you're near, close to me dear We touch too much The thrill when we meet is so bittersweet That darling, it's getting me down On your market set, get out of town On your market set, get out of town Get out of town Get out of town Get out of town. I was thinking about one of the songs I see listed here, Lush Life by Billy Strayhorn. It's such a weird song, you know. I, first of all, it was written by someone who was 16 years old, if you can imagine. A 16-year-old wrote that song to have achieved that letter, level of really profound sadness. Very you know? amazing. In all of the literature, I think this is my favorite. Isn't that the greatest? My favorite, yeah. Okay, let's see. at all the very gay places those come what may places where one relaxes on the axis of the wheel of life to get the feel of life from jazz and cocktails The girls I knew had sad and sullen gray faces with distant gay traces that used to be there. You could see where they'd been washed away, but too many through the day. Twelve o'clock days. You came along with your siren song To tempt me to madness I thought for a while That your poignant smile Was tinged with the sadness Of a great love was wrong again I was wrong life is lonely again and only last year Everything seems so sure Now life is awful again A trough full of hearts Could only be a boy A week in Paris Could ease the bite of it 
care is to smile in spite of it I'll forget you I will while yet you are still burning inside my brain romance is mush stifling those who strive so I live a lush life in some small dive and there I'll be while I rot with the rest of those whose lives are lonely too. I want to do another song with you. I only don't get this chance very often to do songs with people like you. Can we do something like, um, well, I do? Could we do that? Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. We're doing this without the verse again, right?
You know what's such fun is doing songs you haven't played for ages with somebody you just met. And <laughs> kind of like walking off the edge of a cliff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> And, Not for uh, you. I mean, it's, it's, real, it's real improvisation, isn't it? The real thing. Well, not my strong suit, but it is yours. It is. <laughs> Everything's your strong suit, it seems to me. Boy. You're going to do a, a very... I don't know what to call this tune, but the way you do it, Miss Otis regrets. Oh, yeah. That's isn't that a marvelous tune? <laughs> Miss Otis regrets. She's unable to lunch today. Madam, Miss Otis regrets she's unable to lunch today. She is sorry to be delayed. But last evening, down in Lover's Lane, she strayed. Madam, Miss Otis regrets she's unable to lunch today. When she woke up and found that a dream of love had gone, Madam, she ran to the man who had led her so far. And from under her velvet gown She drew a gun and shot her lover down Madam, Miss Otis regrets She's unable to lunch today Madam, they strung her up on the old willow across the way. And the moment before she died, she lifted. Regrets she's unable to lunch today. Miss Otis regrets she's unable to lunch today. She sings so many songs that I love. Aren't, isn't she wonderful? <laughs> While she was singing, I was thinking what fun it would be to try to do like a musical picture of her myself, like make up something that would be my idea of what Linda Ronstadt is like. Shall I try that, do you think?
I'll tell you something, it's awfully nice. First of all, it was very beautiful, and thank you, I'm very flattered. And second of all, it's really cool not to have a drawing where, you know, like sometimes people bring them back and they go, oh, I made a drawing of you, and you know, your left eye is stacked up on top of your right eye. None of that in this, <laughs> this musical portrait. So I'm really, truly grateful. Thank you, Linda. You know, th this could go on all day, it's wonderful. But unfortunately, we only have one more tune coming up, and it's been just so great having Linda Ronsett here with us all afternoon and having Alan Broadbent listening to his wonderful arranging and playing. It's, for me, and I hope for Linda, it's been a ball. I hope you've had a good time. Well, we're just going to go into the last tune, aren't we? Um, which is, I'll be seeing you. Oh, great, right. And I hope that that's true. I hope we'll do another show or something. Okay, great. This is a song my dad used to play on the piano on Sunday afternoons. So let's see. It's Alan's arrangement. Cathedral bells were tolling And our hearts sang on 
Was it the spell of Paris or the April dawn? Who knows if we shall meet again? But when the morning chimes ring sweet. Again, I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces. to Piano Jazz with host Marion McPartland. Her guest today has been Linda Ronstadt with accompanist Alan Broadbent. 